The next logic gate we will be discussing is the OR gate. First we will look at its symbol and operation, next we will look at its truth table and timing diagram, then we will look at its Boolean algebra use, and finally an application. So let's start with the symbol and its function. A two input OR gate is shown here, but this gate can have any number of inputs greater than one. Consider this a quick review if you have seen the video on the AND gate. The number of possible input combinations depends on the number of inputs. If we let the number of inputs be the variable n, then the total number of possible input combinations is 2 to the n power. So our two input gate here has four possible input combinations. We're going to start at 0 and count up in binary to get all of the combinations. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. The OR gate functions by producing an output if any of the inputs are high. If all of the inputs are low, there will be no output. That is, the output will be low. So our first gate has inputs of 0 and 0, so the output is 0. The second gate has inputs of 0 and 1, so it has an output of 1. The third has inputs of 1 and 0, which is just a mirror of the previous gate. It has an output of 1. Lastly, the fourth gate has inputs of 1 and 1, so this gate, too, will have an output of 1. Let's look at the truth table of a two-input OR gate. The inputs are A and B. The output we will call X. So under our inputs, we're going to count up in binary with 0. So the first row is 0, 0. The second row is 0, 1. The third row is 1, 0. And the fourth row is 1, 1. These are the four possible combinations of inputs. Now we can determine the output for each of the given inputs. The first row has inputs of 0 and 0, so the output is 0. The next row is 0 and 1, so the output is 1. The third row is 1 and 0, so the output is 1. And the fourth row is 1 and 1, so the output is 1. So here is the truth table for the two input OR gate. Why don't you try and make a truth table for a three input OR gate? First, how many possible input combinations will there be? If you said eight, then you are correct. Two to the third power is eight, where the exponent three is the number of inputs. As I covered in the AND gate video, this rule applies to any logic gate. Okay, so the rule for the OR gate is the output is high when any input is high. The output is low when all of the gate's inputs are low. With this in mind, pause the video and try to make the truth table on your own. Okay, here's the correct truth table. I have given the inputs the variables A, B, and C. To ensure all possible combinations are being represented, the first row starts with binary 0 and counts up row by row to binary 7 or 1 1 1. The only output that is low in the whole truth table is the first combination of 0 0 0. Now let's move on to a timing diagram. Here we have the timing diagram of the OR gate. Again, this is the same as the truth table. At t equals 0, both inputs are low. At t equals 1, input A is low and B is high. At t equals 2, A is high and B is low. And at t equals 3, both inputs A and B are high. You can see that the only place the output is low is at t equals 0. Let's take a look at a different timing diagram and find the output waveform for ourselves. So now we have two new inputs with seven distinct times, t equals 0 through t equals 6. We can go about finding our output waveform by making a truth table of each time's input values. Then, once the table has been filled out, we can draw our corresponding output waveform. Of course, you can skip the truth table and make the corresponding high or low output level for each time segment if you like, but we'll do it using the truth table for the practice. The first thing we 
want to do is mark our input signal with ones and zeros at each time segment. These are our values for the truth table. Now we can fill out the table. The first row is t equals zero on the timing diagram, row two is t equals one, and so on. So what are the output values? If you said row three is low and everything else is high, then you are correct. This is the same as time t equals two. So let's draw the output waveform on our timing diagram. And that's all there is to it. Getting a jump start on unit four, we're now going to look at the OR gate as a Boolean expression. In Boolean algebra, the OR operation is Boolean addition. The plus sign is used to represent this operation, just like in regular algebra. In Boolean algebra, however, instead of saying A plus B, we will say A or B. Boolean addition follows the same rules as binary addition, which we discussed in Unit 2. Link is in the description. So here are the four possible combinations of a two input OR gate given in terms of Boolean addition. 0 or 0 is 0. 0 or 1 is 1. 1 or 0 is 1. And 1 or 1 is 1. Remember, this is Boolean addition, not regular addition. That last one can trip you up if you don't keep that in mind. So here is a three input OR gate with inputs A, B, and C. The output, X, is given as a Boolean expression of its inputs. X equals A or B or C. So what are some ways the OR gate can be implemented? We would use an OR gate when we want to know if there is any change to a system. For instance, the textbook gives an example using window alarms. Three windows are connected to an OR gate. More precisely, an electrical contact is connected to the OR gate. If the window is closed, the contact is made. This indicates a low input on the OR gate. If the window is opened, the contact is disengaged, which results in a high on the OR gate. This is how an alarm system can be implemented on these windows. As long as the windows are closed, all inputs on the OR gate are low, and so the output is low. However, if one or more windows is opened, as in the situation where someone may be trying to get inside, then the input goes high, creating a high output on the OR gate. This output can then trigger an alarm circuit. That will bring a close to our look at the OR gate. Remember that after we look at all the basic logic gates, I will have a supplemental video on the transistor logic used to create these gates. The next video will be on the NAND gate. Until next time!